Hi, fifth graders. It's Mrs. Lamorne again, and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson 4, Standard Algorithm, one in two digit or one in multi digit numbers with composing. So, we're going to continue to explore that standard algorithm that we learned yesterday, standard algorithm, to multiply one digit numbers and multi digit numbers. And we're going to start with our partial product number talk. We're going to try to do these mentally. Okay, three times three. Well, I know that three times three is nine because I know my math facts. And I know that three threes is nine. Three, six, nine. Oops, there we go. All right, well, in this one, I know that I can do three times two is six, and that's six tens, so that's going to be 60. Oops, I did too many on that one. That's okay. So we can do three times six again is 18. And we're going to add that hundred, right? So then when I have to do three times 623, well, I've already done the 623 times three. So all I have to do is add these together, don't I? So that would be nine plus zero and zero is nine. Six plus zero is six and then add 18, 1869, or 1869. I just had to add those together, didn't I? All right, let's see if it asks us some questions about this. Oops, nope, sure didn't. Okay, let's move on then. Take a minute to look at how Alina and Han calculated 318 times three. Explain to your partner what each student did. So here's how Han calculated 318 times 3. Looks, I think he did 8 times 3 is 24, 3 times 10 is 30, and then 3 times 300 is 900. And then he added all of those partial products up and he got 954. Elena, instead of doing partial products, she used a different method. She used the standard algorithm. So she did 3 times 8, carried the 2 for the 24, right? The 24. She put 2 up here and 4 down here. Then she said 3 times 1 plus 2 is 5. 3 times 1 plus 2 is 5. So here's that 5, right? 3 times 1 plus the 2 from the 24. She got five. Then Elena said three times three is nine. And Elena and Han both got the same answer. Okay. That's a different way of doing it. This is not with pro partial products and the other is with partial products. All right. So what does the two in Elena's calculation represent? Explain or show your reasoning. So I think that the 2 represents that 24. It represents the 20, right? So here's the two tens, the 20 that I carried over, and there's the 4, right? It represents the, the two tens, and 8 times 3 is 24. What does the 5 in Alina's suit? So I'm going to write that. It represents the two tens from... 8 times 3, 8 times 3 is 24. So these two tens is what that 2 represents. What does the 5 represent in Elena's solution? Explain or show your work. So I think it's this 5 here, right? So the two tens plus the 3 times 10 is 30 plus two tens is 50, right? So I think that's how I'm going to write that. So it represents 50 because 3 times 10 equals 30. And then we have to add the two tens for, that we carried over. And that's going to give us the 50. Right? Or 5 tens. We could speak of it either way that we want to do that. All right, compose with standard algorithm. Share your response with your partner. Take turns being the speaker and the listener. 
If you're the speaker, share your ideas and writings. If you're the listener, ask questions and give feedback to your partner. All right, and then you can revise your initial draft based on your feedback. So we would all do that in the classroom. So we're going to share different explanations of Alina's work. Alina used the standard algorithm instead of partial products, the standard algorithm for multiplication to find the product. When we compose a new unit in the standard algorithm, we record the new number of new units over the place value to the left of the digit we're multiplying. So when Alina was doing 318 times 3, and she had a new unit, right? So 24, I can put the 4 in the 1's column, but I'm going to have to put that new unit, those two 10's, to the left of the 1's because it belongs in the 10's column, doesn't it? So I have to put it in a new unit in the place value to the left of the digit you were multiplying. So 3 times 8 is 24. You're going to put that 20 in the 10's column. All right. Okay, here we have some practice. So we're going to calculate each of them using Alina's strategy. So now we're going to practice this new strategy of carrying over those tens or those other digits, right? So let me get a pen out. There we go. So I'm going to start with this one over here. So I'm going to number my work 3,615 times 4. So when I do 4 times 5, I get 20. So 20, I have 0 1s, but I have two 10s. So I'm going to put that in the 10s column to the left, right? Then I'm going to say 4 times 10 is 40, plus 2 is going to be 60. Now I don't have to worry about that too anymore because I've added it, those two 10s to the 6, to the, to the 40. Now I'm going to do 3 times 4 is 24. So I'm going to carry, it's really 600 times 4, right? But we're not going to worry about that. We're going to say 6 times 4 is 24 and carry those two leftovers, those two extras up there to the thousands. And then I'm going to say 3 times 4 is 12 plus 2 is 14. So I'm going to say this answer is 14,460. Now I'm going to do number two. 16,023 times three. Yep, three. Three times three is nine, and I don't have anything to carry over. And then I'm going to say two times three is six, and the six in the, in the tens place because it's 20 times three, right? So it's really 60. Okay, three times zero is zero. 3 times 6 is 18. Well, I can put the 8 down here, but I'm going to have to carry that 1 over to the left so that I can use it in the next place value. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So this answer is going to be 48,069. Okay, moving right along. All right, so I'm going to continue with number 3. And number three, I'm going to write my answer here, is 27,326, right? 27326. I always have to be careful copying down large numbers. All right, times three. So again, three times six is 18. I'm going to carry that one over. Three times two is six, plus one is seven. 3 times 3 is 9. I don't have to carry over anything. I put a comma. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2, 6, 7, 8. So 81,000, 81,978. Okay? Last problem. Number 4. I have 10,000. 215 times 6. 6 times 5 is 30, so I'm going to have to write that 30 like that. 6 times 1 is 6, 
I'm going to have to add the three tens. So six, seven, eight, nine. Six times two is 12. Six times zero is zero, but I'm going to have to add that thousand. One. One plus zero is zero. I mean, one. <laughs> and six times one is six. So number four is 61,290. All right, that was some good practice on that standard algorithm. Let's see what's next. Okay, which new units did you decompose or recompose in the first problem? I did new tens, didn't I? Remember that was, let's see, let's remind ourselves, 3,615 uh, 3, times 4. So in the first problem, I had to, I had to compose the 20, right, to make a new 10,000. And then I had to also do it, see, that was 6, 24, right? I had to do it here, too. And then I had to add it to the 3. So 12 plus 3 is 14. There we go. All right. Which new units did you do in the second problem? When the in second problem, I need to do new ten thousands because three times six thousand was eighteen thousand. And so you can share those problems with your classmates in class and your teacher. How did you find the volume of the third, the value of the third problem? Well, I just continued in that same thing, right? It was a bigger number, but we got it. Okay. Today we learned the standard algorithm to multiply whole numbers, 27,326 times 3. Which new units were composed there and how do you know? How did you keep track of the new units? Well, they composed new tens and new ten thousands. I see a 1 above the two tens and a 2 above the ten thousands. Um, and how did I keep track of it? I wrote them above the first factor in the correct place value. So if I were going to do this again, 27,326 times 3, I have to compose a new number there, 18. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is Eight. So I had to um, recompose the new tens and compose new ten thousands. Okay. Let's see what's next. All right. So here's our cool down. We have to find, use the standard algorithm to find the value of this number. So let's work on that. 35. 3,514 times 7. So I'm going to have to compose new tens, right? Because 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 2 is 9. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 3, 21 plus 3, 24. I had to compose new tens, and I had to compose new thousands. But now it makes it much easier than doing partial products the whole time, right? If I were doing partial products, this is how it would look. 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 10 is 70. This is in the tens place. 7 times 500 is 3,500. 7 times... 3,000 is going to be 21,000. And then we would have to add all of that up. Right? So here is the standard algorithm, and here is the partial products. We want you to get to the standard algorithm. Okay, well, that's it for today. Please join me again for lesson five.